let's talk about treating burns, because burns are something that happen to everybody, and especially happen around the house and often happen in the kitchen. But let me give you a word of warning before we talk about burns. Sometimes some of my patients have been hurt worse by trying to put the fire out than just getting away from the fire. So if you have a kitchen fire or a fire in the house or garage or anywhere you are, the first most important thing is to get out. You can rebuild the kitchen, you can remodel the garage, but you only have one body. Just get out, get away from the fire, because that's what hurts you and that's what can kill you. So get away. You can always yell to someone else to call 911, but there's nothing worse than being burnt and then trying to put the fire out and getting burnt much worse. So forget about the fire and think about yourself. Okay, so what do we do about burns? Well, one of the first things, this might sound a little obvious, is put the fire out, okay? And often you can do that just by running the area under cold, uh, cold water. You know that often when you're burnt, the, the, the tissue, the meat of your body keeps cooking. And this is where burns can get really dangerous. So as soon as you're burned, get cold water on it, run to the sink, and put cold water on it. And the next best thing would be to make one of those ice bags and put it right on the burn. Okay, you gotta stop the cooking. You have to stop the fire. So remember my first two important things. Don't try to put the fire out. Get out, get away from the fire. Tell someone else to do it because you've already been injured. And the second thing, Get cold water and ice on that burn immediately, as fast as possible, to stop the cooking of your flesh. Okay, if it's not a serious burn, and it's just like a first degree burn or even a second degree burn, uh, one of the things that I like to do is use my jojoba and tea tree oil on the burn. Uh, you can use it in either the oil or the ointment. Um, there's a couple things that are very important about jojoba oil, and that's that it penetrates through the skin. Most oils just swim around on top of the skin, but jojoba oil is actually an ester, and it does penetrate deeply through all layers of your skin. And with it is the tea tree oil, which is an antibacterial, an antiviral, and an antifungal, and it's great burn treatment. But if you've been burnt more severely, another great treatment is aloe vera. People use aloe vera for sunburns, and it works amazing. There's all types of aloe vera creams and lotions on the market that are beautiful for sunburns or any type of burn. They put the fire out. But most of them, unfortunately, are garbage. They look like fluorescent blue uh, hair setting gel. Now, it says on them 99% aloe vera, pure aloe vera, but what they mean is the 1% that's in there is 99% pure. They're garbage. There's very few good ones on the market. You'll find a couple good ones in a health food store. But better than that, anybody can have their own aloe vera cactus, like this one right here, that you can have right in your kitchen, right in your clinic, anywhere you want, and then it's there to use anytime you need aloe vera. And I'm gonna show you how to do that because I used fresh aloe vera on all my patients' burns. In fact, in my clinic in Malibu, I had a 40-year-old aloe vera growing outside uh, my clinic window, and I used it to treat patients for almost 20 years in that particular clinic. Um, the older the aloe vera, the more potent it is. This aloe vera is not that old, so it wouldn't be that potent. So grow them as big as you can if you live in a nice area like Florida or California, where you can just dig them and put them in the ground outside and they'll love it and they'll grow wild. Um, if you live in colder climates, well, they won't do well, but you can grow them in the house and use a plant grow light. But you always wanna have an aloe vera cactus around. Now, sometimes they're the yellow flowered or the official variety. Uh, the one in Malibu was another variety. It was aloe vera, some different uh, possible species. And uh, it was an orange flowered one, and that one worked just as good. Uh, any type of aloe plant works really good for healing wounds. There's many chemicals in allen, uh, one of them, uh, alloin or allantoin, that is a cell proliferin. It helps your cells grow back uh, five to ten times faster than normal. So let me show you how to do it. 
you simply just cut a leaf off. You take any type of knife and cut a leaf off, and they come off pretty easy. They almost snap off, and now you have a leaf. And you see that the leaf has a skin on the outside and all this gel on the inside. You can see the gel here. Now I'm gonna put this down on the cutting board because what you wanna do next, it's really quite simple. Depending on the size of the area you wanna treat, but say like you burnt your finger or your arm, getting something in and out of the oven, well cut yourself a two or three inch piece, cut it off, throw it over so it's on a flat surface and cut off the edge and cut the edge off on the other side. And now what you want to do, you can see all the goo starting to come out of there. Now what you want to do, if you have a good fillet knife, it works best, but you just want to fillet off the skin and expose the gel like that. Oh, you can see how slimy and good it's getting. Now, what you can do on top of that is fillet off the other side, or you can leave that skin on. So let's look at how we would put this aloe vera right on a burn. Uh, well, I'm going to want a little thinner piece because it's for my hand. So I'm just going to slice a piece of this gel right off here. And just take a piece of this nice gel. Look at that beautiful stuff. Just like this. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this right on my hand here imagining that is the burned area. The next thing you want to do is cover it with some type of gauze pad. Now, I have these next care pads here, um, but uh, they come individual like this, and they're great pads, uh, but you can use any type of gauze. You can use a piece of an old t-shirt and just put it over the wound and over the aloe, over the burn, and over the aloe, just like this. The next thing you do is you just take some pieces of tape and take the tape, and it's always hard bandaging yourself. And you're getting the idea though, and take this tape and wrap it around. I usually like to get a first couple pieces of tape on, like this, and get it down tight. Now I got an area to work with and that aloe's in there. Now I can go ahead and put further pieces of tape over it, tape it closed, and now I have the aloe taped right down to my skin. And this is going to be magical for the burn. So let's just review for a minute. The first rule when you're burned is get out of the fire. Don't try to put the fire out. Let someone else put the fire out or call 911. Get out of the fire and flush the wound with cold water immediately. The second thing you want to do is put some ice on it. Stop the burning. Stop the cooking of that area. Then once it stops cooking, you can cover the area with some jojoba and tea tree oil, uh, the oil or the ointment, or even use some aloe vera and slice it up, uh, put the gel on like I did, and tape it to the body. Now, the next day, you're going to notice that the aloe's gone. Maybe in a few hours, it's absorbed right into your body. Put another fresh piece on and keep doing that for three or four days, and the next thing you're going to know, the burn is gone. Now I'm going to talk about treating cuts and open wounds. And I want you to remember the first thing way back at the beginning of the video where I said that it's really not as bad as it looks. Often when you cut your hand or your face, uh, it looks like a ton of blood is coming out. It looks like a quart or a liter of blood, but it's really probably less than a teaspoon, at the most a tablespoon. But a little blood goes a long way. It's something we usually want to be on the inside of our body, not see on the outside of our body. But you got to trust me on this one. It's almost always not a big deal. Okay, so if it is a big deal, and you, and you realize right away, this is more than I can handle, you know what to do? Call 911. Let me tell you that I always go on and on and on about the butchery of medical doctors. But the one place medicine excels is probably the 1% of medicine, which is trauma medicine. So if you're in over your head, don't worry about it. Call 911. Hey, if you're in a bad auto accident and part of you is on one side of the freeway and your leg is on the other side, 
I want trauma surgery. I want neurosurgeons, okay? This is the time when we want to use medical doctors and all that they have available for us. But I'm talking about cutting yourself with a knife around the house, with a box cutter, you're opening a box, or some wound or gash in your body. That you can take care of yourself. So the first thing you want to do is apply pressure to the body. This will stop the bleeding, and it also covers up the wound for a minute so the person that's hurt and you can have a little breath for a minute without looking at it. So just cover it up, put pressure on it. Now you can use a piece of gauze, you can use your shirt, you can use a tea towel, you can use paper towels. It doesn't matter, but you just cover the wound and put some pressure on it. This alone usually stops the bleeding. Now that you've put pressure on it, if you can, ask the person to hold this. Now remember way back at the beginning of the video when I talked about trauma, the other thing was get that person to sit down or lie them down. Very important because we don't want them falling down, hitting their head and causing a worse injury. So put pressure on the wound, hold it tight, stop the bleeding, be reassuring, say look, it's not that bad, it's, it's only a nick, don't worry, this is something we can fix, relax. Okay, you're putting pressure on the wound as you're saying that. The next thing you want to do, if the person's passing out or being faint, is give them some cayenne tincture. This will wake them right back up and you won't lose them and it'll make them behave. Um, if they're all panicky and freaked out and having an anxiety attack or a panic attack, go the other way and give them some nerve tonic and relax them a little bit and reassure them more. Say, look, this is not a big deal. Just relax. The whole time you're keeping the pressure on the wound. Now the next thing you want to do is take a look at it. And hopefully you're up for this. And if you're not, take a little cayenne tincture yourself. But that's the next thing we're going to do. Now usually the bleeding stops. If, if you take the pressure off and the piece of material or the cloth or your shirt or the gauze off and there's a lot of blood spurting, well you've hit an artery. Now it's very unlikely to hit an artery. Very difficult to hit an artery. That usually happens in major, major trauma and car accidents, but it's very hard. Usually you've hit a vein, maybe not even that, maybe just a small capillary. But as long as there's no spurting blood, you're fine. Just keep the pressure on. If it's still bleeding, keep a little pressure on. Okay, the next thing you want to do is flush the wound with the anti-infection tincture. This is going to clean it, this is going to disinfect it immediately, and this is also going to slow down, if not stop, the bleeding. So you get your anti-infection tincture out and you flush the wound with one dropper full, two dropper fulls, repeated dropper fulls. Just make a mess and cover that area. And if the bleeding is still trickling a little bit, you can go ahead and apply more pressure. But that gives you a minute to take a look at it to see, okay, this is something we can deal with. It's not a big deal. I've, I've dealt with so many people that have sliced their body seriously open from little kitchen knife accidents to big gashes with woodworking tools and to auto accidents where pieces were off and I just glued them back on and put them back together. Um, so flush it with the anti-infection. Okay, now the bleeding stopped and now you want to take a look at the wound. Now I always suggest to make sure that the person sitting down and relaxed and has their nerve tonic or their cayenne to keep them conscious. And now it's time to check it out. Let's see how bad it is. Uh, usually for that, you want to put on a pair of reading glasses again so you can really get a close-up look. You could use a magnifying glass, but the problem is, is now you've used up one of your hands. So I like using reading glasses for checking it out. And now you've got to take a look at it. Now hopefully you just flushed it out, and if it was with a kitchen knife or even a rusty uh, jack knife, it doesn't matter, you're going to be fine. 